He thinks about what race his opponent is and deals with the constraints of the race. Yeah, and from there he's able to just dissect them and play an overall, as we like to say, a standard way, a macro way of just winning a game. Letting his opponent make the mistakes rather than himself. Game number one is underway. It's time to see who's going to take the lead in game number one between MMA and Trap. Well, down in the bottom right-hand corner, the first man ever to win a triple crown in StarCraft II, looking for a season three champion. It's Acer's MMA! Spawning up or a yonder top left position. Known for being one of the most stable, solid late game Protosses. Will he be able to get there and win today? It is SDX Souls Trap! Belshear Vestige will be our first map of contention. And I feel like this is a great map overall. Surprisingly for Trap, I would say. A mm -hmm. lot of the early game aggression, yes, there's multiple angles that you can attack a Protoss, but when it comes down to it, the Colossus are able to do enough AoE, or even the High Templars are enough, oh, yeah. uh, enough to do enough AoE to stop any SEV pulls. So a lot of times on this map, it's not saying it's completely disregarded, but you can say SEV pulls are maybe 80% efficiency or 70% efficiency of normal open maps. Yeah, I mean, you just look at these entrances right here, trying to get in the, uh, the early SCV trains. There's the force fields that can naturally go down there, or even just Zealot Walls plus Colossus. Or my favorite, a Storm. Storms on ramps are one of the coolest things in StarCraft II, especially when there's lots of Terran units on it. <laughs> Take that, Terran players. MMA is opening with his pretty t traditional fast gas play. He loves opening Reapers, and this is a fantastic map to do it on, given how close these are by Reaper distance. I'm surprised he's not abusing the fact that Trap is so um, just standard to begin with. But I guess he's just saying, well, Trap, he does prepare for players. Let's not try to roll the dice first game. It is his first match here yeah. in the group stages. This is kind of a surprisingly early scout from a lot of what we see out of MMA, but lines up very nicely with this timing of this Reaper, being able to see the expansion, maybe throw down a block. And then the SCV will arrive, excuse me, the Reaper will arrive in time. What great timing there by MMA. Trap would love to get this Nexus down, but it's not going to happen. No and MMA is likely to throw down the eBay. Uh, Command Center is being thrown down first, though. So I like the order so far. Mm -hmm. uh, but will he have enough? Uh, reactor is going to go down instantly afterwards. And he will be able to accrue enough minerals to place this oh, down. Wow. But a Zealot is just going to disregard this altogether and go for the counterattack. Wow, and this is such a brutal position for MMA because he only has one unit, uh, one attacking unit out on the map, and that's the Reaper that doesn't even know about this incoming Zealot. Uh-oh. MMA Whoa. is barracks, is not yet done. He doesn't have a bunker coming up, and this Zealot and Mothership Core are quite a far ways down the map. Yeah, this is scary. I mean, just against the Mothership Core alone, you need at least four Marines. With the Zealot engaging as well, you need a lot more and yes, you're producing two at a time. Will the bunker be able to come up in time? I don't think so. Oh, wow. What a move from Trap. MMA is going to be caught completely by surprise. This bunker is going to show up and pick off that SCV. MMA's got to get well, this bunker down. He's going to finish it. Time Warp goes down, but oh. the bunker is going to load one Marine and a Reaper. And now Chase is being given... Two Marines almost out right now, but it's still not enough to deal with this force because the Mothership Core, it represents just so much damage here, and it's an air unit. But with, there's absolutely no time warp available. There's no recall available. So this Stalker is destined to die. The question is how much damage can it do? And the answer is going to be many damage. <laughs> Looks like the Marines are gonna pop out instantly, target fire the Mothership Core. If it can pick that oh. off, this is gonna be a tremendous win from MMA. Great Stalker Micro. Uh, just picking off the Marines, uh, scooting and shooting until... Oh, stalker number two. Oh, Whoa. can he get it? No, oh. he will not. Narrowly gets away, and MMA is taking some pretty steep damage. 24 to 34 supply. We see that Nexus already done. Robo en route. Yeah, five total SEVs have been killed, and continuous pressure will come of this. Again, losing more Marines. And now he has this bunker wow. that doesn't have anything inside but some SEVs. He's going to have to lift off. 
Trap is dominating in this first game. Completely read the scout movement patterns from MMA, saw that that Reaper wasn't anywhere close to seeing the Zealot, and saw the opportunity, took it, and didn't even slow down the rest of his economy very much. Oh, this is incredible, and really punishing the build of MMA. We've seen MMA do this continuous amount of times, go for the reactor before the second supply depot, and this is the effects of this. As you can see, MMA just so far behind now. Oh, and it gets Still. away! Trap is playing fantastically. Okay, D9, what's the damage? I mean, Well, I'm almost scared to hit the button, but here it is. Five SCDs and eight Marines. Whoa. Not a terrible blow to the economy, but still more than enough. I mean, that Harvester tab, if you look at 22 against 36, that is a hefty probe advantage that the Terran, or the Protoss has over the Terran. And not only that, the tech is really nice yeah. for the Protoss. Stim is heavily delayed at this point. The production facilities are heavily delayed. Everything is going right for Trap. And you think, if you're in Trap's position, you say, all right, I got the lead, how do I lose? What is the error I can make? One is mine drops. You saw mines forced. And the other one is going to be general medevac drop-based play. Uh, Stim, Marine Marauder pushes. But all that is going to be so far and away because there was no tech lab down for MMA for a long time. Throughout that, excuse me, throughout that entire push, there was really not that much that MMA could do tech-wise. So Trap, these look like perhaps wasteful cannons, but this is going to allow Trap to expand almost immediately to his third, because there's just no threats that can pierce him at this point. Normally you have to go up to like five gateways, I would say, just to expand. You don't have to necessarily make units, but you have absolutely have to make that production to keep up with your opponent. Yeah, he doesn't even have to do that, because he knows there's n never going to be direct attacks, never going to be like that, that very strong attack that can just instantly kill him. It's going to be this finesse stuff that we see a lot of times, just a single medevac dropping, because there's not enough out here for MMA. And we're going to see that high Templar, or Templar archives being thrown down here. Wow, Trap is really powering up here. This is a very difficult thing to do, to go to three base and get charged Templar, but it's very easy once your opponent has an extreme delay on all his tech. I mean, the cannons deny the drops, the initial attack denied the mid-game drops from getting that much momentum. So I like MMA's choice. He's saying, well, if I can't attack for a long time, I may as well go extremely upgrade heavy. MMA is going to be relying on mid-game tactics. It's very much so like Pult. And I don't know what MMA can do from here. He does need to get stuff done right now. He is behind from the beginning stages. The income tab showing 42 to 55 harvesters. The, the actual income of minerals is pretty even because of mules, but he should be pretty far ahead normally in, yeah. in, in conventional TVPs. You need that surge to pay for all of your production facilities and at the same time just get that consistent... I would say map control, so a lot of units out in the field, so you have a lot of time to deal with to get the right composition, whether it be Ghost or Viking. Yeah, definitely. This is, this is a tough position for MMA. Trap has been playing impeccably. I mean, look at this. Charge is done. As the medevacs finish, Ugh. everything is in good shape. Cannons are being placed up. Normally, as a Protoss player, you're trying to avoid building those cannons. You only build them if you are desperately looking for defense, but Trap finding the situation where it's the perfect choice. Trap even getting up the war prison. He's going to go defense plus counterattack. But uh -oh. what is his warp gate count at? Well, oh. the war prism is going to go directly onto the same Metavax. Uh -oh. And if he can get gets it? to can pick get this it? off, Stim, yes, he gets all four of them. None of the, the zealots unloaded there. That's a nice 600 mineral pickup. Going to get a little bit of extra bonus material, but Trap being an excellent spotter himself, sees the expo, going to take it down. MMA being tracked by those observers everywhere he goes. MMA's going to be forced to lift again. It's a long haul before MMA can get himself up. And oh, baby, it looks like there's a timing coming up. Ghosts are normally a very dicey move to do this quickly. So it's likely going to be an SCD pull follow-up from MMA, who's looking for an opportunity to pick off this small force. Yeah. Normally, this is considered very risky, but Whoa. in this position, because he's been so far ahead, this seems so natural. Now, moving into the third base, taking out two quick zealots, he will be able to pick out of here pretty soon, as there are just way too many units. Wow, nice moves from MMA. Great stuff. I mean, kills two zealots, he's efficient, kills it in an extra cannon, and then from there, picks up, gets out of there with all of his units. 
still maintaining. And as you said, with the fast ghosts, you want to make sure you have that big ball. So it doesn't matter if you have an upgrade advantage, you'll still be able to, yeah. uh, well, be impregnable. You can never get that surround with mass zealots. Where's, you know, I was going to be leaning heavily towards the, oh yes, definitely going to be the SCV pull. I've seen him do this exact same three times in WCS EU, but... MMA is doing a couple of things that are discordant with that. He's going for the 2-2 upgrades as well. So maybe he'll go for an SCV pull, but the only timing would be in, what, three minutes when his upgrades are done? That's too long to wait. So yeah. maybe MMA is actually readjusting his plan because he did go for this Ghost Academy play after his third was lifted. Every time we've seen MMA do an SCV pull, it's always off of 1-1, and he never gets the armory. So this yeah. is a clear indicator to me, at least, that he probably won't do something like this. And he really does flourish at this point in the game, when it's mid-game, end-game stages. We yeah. talk about how he has a lot of tricky builds, but he also has fantastic end-game. And we're seeing that right now as he's able to take small little oh, advantages. Oh, it's outside of MMA's vision range. This is going to be a storm and zealot warp and drop. More zealots being warped in on the left side. Movement from trap in middle center, but there's the drop uh -oh. in the main. And now he goes over to the main. Oh, he's just going to warp in. Oh, I love this. He saves the High Templar because right now MMA has no indicator to know he should be microing against Storm. But in a blink of an eye, he's going to be very, very surprised. There's the hot pickup. And it looks like while all this is going on, MMA is attempting a Doom wow. counter drop in the main. Three attacks going on at the same time into the third base. High Templars will be able to connect on some SEVs, but now defending the main base. This is the big priority. Oh, the High Templar falls. And up in the main base, oh my god, MMA has gotten an advantage in this uh, angling. These zealots aren't doing anything. Look at that, he's nestled nicely between the refinery and the gateway. Every zealot goes down, Warpins instantly get evaporated. Uh -oh. MMA's gonna have to rally up into his main base. There's more Warpins. Trap is just trying to out-muscle MMA, taking a huge loss. There's the SCV pull. <laughs> he's, oh! oh! Tremendous storms from Trap. But it looks like the Nexus, the key defensive linchpin in the main base, is going to fall. It goes down. Wow, incredible play so far. 2-2 just hit right now for MMA. So his army will be a little bit more sturdy. Now going into the natural base, does Trap have anything to deal with this? Big pylon powering all of those gateways. Could be unpowered. There's another big storm on a ramp, Day9. MMA is doing his best to withstand this crazy counter-aggression, but... It is 25 probes to 56. Oh, gosh. Wow, Trap. taking out the High Templars. Nicely done. He needs to get out of there. Oh. It's a nice indication from MMA that it is going to be a retreat from Trap. Why would he warp in these Templar unless he was planning on heading home? We see that Trap is still wreaking havoc, and this is going to be a forced all-in time for MMA. He's lost the Ghost Academy. He has no opportunity to get snipes for those Stormers. He's going to try to desperately target the Templar Archive, and he... Oh! oh. Just one oh, that shot is, away. This is the most unfair thing I've ever seen. If there's maybe a way that he could, like, transfer into that one and then drop, MMA will be up against more Storms. Second backup Templar Archives, just in case. Just very nicely done by Tramp so far. Just playing it so well, understanding his advantages and able to put himself on the map. A lot of players would, oh, so some sick, sick plays. So sick. Big jukes, MMA. MMA stills got the moves. The Templar count, though, at an extremely high oh. seven. Nice M pickoffs. 170 to 119 mass mules. MMA essentially has one last round of income flood that he is going to rely on. Ghost Academy is going to go down. I mean, the SCV count, 30 to 56. There's oh. the push. Oh, and oh, High Templar's in High the High Templar, Storm drops. Beautiful. And there's the third one going down. Hot pickup yet again. But all of these units are battered and, and worn out right now. And now he's going to go push in for the third base, going to counterattack, trying to go into a base trade situation. But I feel like the army of Trap is just too sturdy for this game. Well, there's another High Templar that's getting in a good storm in position. All MMA can hope oh, to do gosh, is Oh gosh, he can't kite. even pick up. He, get, ugh, he loses two big medevacs. Now the SEV pull. Archons are too much though, in my opinion. And the Zealots just flood in one by one by one. And it's just too overwhelming. GG. Trap. Bring in the Korea hype train. It was... He
It was close, though. I mean, considering this, the beginning stages, losing those five Marines, that, or the eight Marines, five SEVs in the beginning stages, I can't go over that enough, how far that puts you behind. Stim timings, combat shield timings, you lose any sort of attacking presence in the beginning stages. You don't have a 